So from your mountain pose, we're going to take a flow um, which is based on sun salutation C. And as you know, and that sun salutation C where we um, stretch a lot into the hip flexors, also the hamstrings. So enjoy. We're going to start off slowly and then get a little bit faster with our breath. Not too fast, just moving breath and movement together. All right. So breathe in, reach the arms up to the sky. Maybe looking up, stretching up. Gentle back bend if you like. Come back to center if you are back bending and exhale, bend the knees fold forwards into Uttanasana. Use your breath with the movement. Inhale, halfway lift, straighten the back of your body. And exhale, both hands down. Step your right foot back, right knee down. Breathe in, reach the arms up to Anjanasana, low lunge, hug the low ribs in. Exhale, both hands down, straighten the front knee, straighten the back leg, find that pyramid. So you can use extra blocks if you've got extra blocks to bring the ground up to you. And then exhale, bend into that front knee, reach the arms all the way up. Breathe in here, find space in that hip flexor, so lengthening the tailbone down. And breathe out, both hands down, step back to a plank. So just a regular sun seat to start with, with a little additions. And then exhale, your chaturanga, or you can go all the way to the floor. Take a breath in, find that back bend. So try and move with your breath. The breath initiates the movement. Exhaling, then you move to down dog. Breathe in, reach the right leg up to the sky. And exhale, bend the knee, right foot forwards, left knee down. Inhaling, the arms switch up. And Janasana. Exhale, both hands either side of the front foot or on blocks. And then inhale, finding that. Pyramid pose, maybe toes up or down. Bend into the front knee, breathe in, reach the arms all the way up. And exhale, both hands forward, step the back foot to the top, fold. Great, inhale, halfway lift. And fold and breathe out. Press feet into the mat, the arms reach out, all the way up, look up and stretch up, maybe a gentle standing back then. Think about lengthening the tailbone down when you do that. Come back to centre and all the way back down again, folding as you exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, this time left foot back, left knee down. Breathe in, the arms reach up, lengthen tailbone, hug low ribs, stretch up. Exhale, both hands down. Find that pyramid, straighten both knees, toes up or down. Hug the inner thighs towards each other. Bend into the front knee. Breathe in, reach the arms up, high lunge. And then exhale, both hands down, find that plank. Breathe in in your plank and exhale. Take it all the way or halfway. Hug the elbows in, protect shoulders. Inhale to your back bend, squeeze the back body. And exhale, release out, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg rises. Exhaling, bend knees, step the left foot forwards, right knee down. Breathing in, the arms sweep up. Remembering that Ujjayi breath if you still want to continue. Exhale, both hands forwards, and then breathing in, straightening front back leg. Exhale, bend into that front knee, and then breathe in, reach the arms up. Both hands to the top of the mat, step the back foot forwards, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale to fold. Ground through the feet, reach the arms all the way up to the sky. Again, palms can join, gentle back bend, lengthening the tailbone down. Come back to center, arms out to the side, let's add on, fold forward. So just moving with our breath, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, both hands down, right foot back, right knee down. Inhaling the arms sweep up. Exhale, both hands to the top, straight in front and back knee. Breathe in here, that's it. Exhale, bend into the front knee, reach the arms up, find that high lunge. Moving on from here, inhale here. And then exhale, right hand down, left arm reaches up to the sky for an easy lunge twist. Turn and look up to the fingertips. Press down into the right palm, get that lifting sensation into the left fingertips. 
and really engage and press back through the back heel, the right heel. And then bring that left hand inside of the left foot, turn and pivot the right toes to the right, reach the right arm up, find a side angle. So we're going to move a little bit slower the first round. From side angle, think about lengthening, lifting a little bit away so that your side body is not resting too much on the front thigh. And then right hand comes on your hip, reach the left fingertips forwards. We're coming into half moon, Adi Chandrasana. So start to lift up off that back foot, right leg, balancing on the left foot, turn and open so that your right hip is on top of your left. Fingertips can be on the floor or you can practice hovering them. And then if you like, reach the right arm up. Just pause here, looking down for balance. Don't worry if you wobble, that's fine. Breathe in. And breathe out. Softly bend into that front knee and start to come all the way back, landing as light as you can into warrior two. <laughs> Good. And then we're going to flow through reverse warrior and warrior uh, side angle. So inhaling, finding a reverse warrior with your right hand sort of coming towards the left knee, left arm behind. So you're not leaning on everything, anything. Then exhale, come forward, that left hand comes towards the right hip, right arm reaches over. Do that a few more times. Keep your front knee bent as strong as you can. Inhale, come back, reverse. And exhale, find that side angle. Reaching, good. One more time. Inhale, reverse. So you should start feeling this in your front quad and your hamstring maybe. Exhale, come into that side angle. Brilliant. Inhale, come back, reversing it. And then finally, warrior two. Straighten that left knee, turn the toes to face the side of the mat, the right side of the mat. Open the arms out, coming into Prasarita Padatanasana. So start to lean forwards, hinging from the hips as you exhale. Come forwards with that straight back. Keep looking forwards until you can't go any further forwards. And instead of bringing the hands sort of level with your feet, can this time can you reach your arms as far forward as you can and let your head come between the upper arms, stretching into the shoulders and maybe bend, leaning backwards a little bit so that you're feeling a bit more of an intense stretch in the back of your legs, but also in your shoulders. Remembering your intention, whatever it is that you're letting go of, you can always sigh it out. Breathe in. And breathe out. One more breath here. Inhale, just enjoy this stretch. It's one of my favorite ones. And then slowly start to walk your hands underneath your face. Walk your hands towards the back foot. And then hold on to either the calf or the ankle of your right foot with your left hand. Reach your right arm up, finding a twist. Good. Exhale, bring that right hand down. Walk your hands to the front foot, towards the left foot. Hold on to the left ankle or the calf or the knee, wherever you can reach, and reach the opposite arm up. Find that nice twist. Maybe your gaze goes up if your neck feels okay. Breathe out, come back to centre. Then inhale, start to look halfway up, lengthening through the back body. Hands come to prayer and exhale, bend in into the right knee, Skandasana, so surface lunge. If you're off your back heel, your right heel, that's fine. I am, do your best to balance. And then bring your right elbow on the inside of that right knee, reach the left arm up. Try and point your left toes up to the ceiling. Be active in the left leg. Go easy if your knees are complaining, don't go down so low. And then, hands or no hands, come back through center and make your way to the left side, Skandasana. So you can challenge your balance if you want without any hands or you can use your hands to help you. And then left hand on the inside of that left knee, right arm reaches up. Good, looking up to the fingertips. And then bringing that right hand down and start to walk your way forwards. Heel toe that left foot a little bit more to the left side of the mat. Come into this sort of real deep lizard lunge. So your back knees up off the mat and your front foot's level with that left hand, your left foot. Look forwards and then step your right foot outside your right hand. Find yourself in a yogi squat. Hands come to prayer. Good. 
and then not staying here too long, hands down. Step your left foot back, finding yourself in that lizard lunge with your right foot forward to the other side, working into the hips. And then inhale, step back to that yogi squat, Malasana. Hands come to the inside. So palms can be a prayer. You can press the knees away and maybe have that light engagement. Good. Option to stay here if you're ready and you want to go forward for a little crow or even part of a crow. Come forwards. Lean. Maybe you're here with me with your knees squeezing on your upper triceps, just looking forwards. Lifting one foot, lifting the other. Maybe you're in a full crow. If you are, hold it for about three breaths. Just be glad with wherever you are. You don't have, always have to come into the full expression of the pose. Just have that intention. And then either step or jump back. We're going through a vinyasa. But then meeting me in downward facing dog. Good job. <laughs> downward facing dog. So just mixing it up a little bit with a little bit of crow thrown in. So that's the flow, we're gonna flow through that on the other side. So inhale, look forwards, and breathe out, journey away to the top of the mat, stair for hop. Breathe in, halfway left, lovely to see you, Vicky. Exhale, fold. Press through the feet, reach the arms all the way up to the sky. Now exhale, hands to your heart. We'll do it with the left leg back first this time. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhaling, arms come out to the side. Breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, left foot back, left knee down. Inhaling, arms sweep up. Breathing out, both hands down, mat or blocks. And breathe in, straight the front and back knee. Exhale, bend into that front knee. And as you breathe in, reach the arms all the way up. Find that high lunge. Crescent lunge. Exhaling, left hand down, right arm reach up. Easy lunge twist, remember. Energetic through the back leg, really reaching the heel back, stretching up through the right fingertips, pressing down into the left palm. And then bring your right hand inside that right foot, pivot the left toes to the left, reach the arm up all the way into that side angle variation. So find steadiness, maybe a little bit of lift as you lift the bottom waist, the right hand waist away from that leg. Left hand onto hip, reach the right arm forward. See if you can come into half moon smoothly with the breath. And if you need a block or anything to bring the ground up to you, remember you can always do that. And then turn and open that left hip so it's in on top of your right hip. Maybe reach the left fingertips up. Perhaps lifting the right fingertips away from the mat. Just holding your balance. Focus when we're in this sort of balancing is bound to be just where we are. <laughs> Never a bad thing. And then softly bend into the right knee. Gently as you can, step back into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. So find that strength in the front leg. You're gonna be here for a while to so flow through the reverse warrior to side angle. Inhale, come into that reverse warrior. No hands, so that left hand's reaching towards the right thigh. And exhale, right hand reaching towards left thigh, left arm up and open, good, towards the front. Breathing, come back. Exhale as you find it. In, coming back through center, and exhale, finding side angle, Pajmanasana. One more time, both ways, inhale, come up. Find that reverse warrior. And exhale, come back to center. Finding your side angle. Inhale, come all the way back, find that final reverse warrior. Oh, keep bent in the front knee if you can, and reach the arms long warrior two. Straighten the front knee, turning the toes to the side of the mat, opening the arms out wide for Prasarita Padottanasana, so the feet are parallel to each other. And then exhale, come forwards, your arms can be out wide if you like. Just use your core strength, lengthening, leading with your chin. Reach the hands forwards as far as you can, and then bring your head between the upper arms. Allow yourself to sink down a little bit. This is a little bit like a puppy pose, really, in your upper body. And then maybe your hips reach backwards. Weight a little bit more into the heels. 
but keep reaching actively with your fingertips forward. So opposite the ways of stretching. So you're trying to reach forward, but you're also leaning back. A moment just to breathe in. Maybe open your mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Letting it go. Inhale, come up halfway. Start to walk your hands back till you're up halfway. And then walk your hands again towards the um, back foot, the left foot. Grabbing hold of the left ankle or calf with your right hand, left arm reaches up. Exhale, come back through centre. Hold on to the right ankle with your left hand, reach the right arm up. And then bring both hands back to centre. And crawl your way to the front of the mat. Heel toeing the right foot towards the right, finding that high lizard lunge with the left leg uh, off the, the knee off the mat. And then step your left foot to the outside with the left hand. Find your yogi squat again. And then bring both hands down, step the right foot back, finding that lizard lunge. Really lift the heart through, try and avoid the rounding of the upper back if you can here. Hug that left knee inwards a little bit. And then step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Find the lasana again. Either stay here, or I'm going to stay here if you want to stay here with some hand variations, or come into another um, crow pose. If you want to stay here and work on this, reach the right arm to the side, left arm up. And then you're bringing that left arm behind you and maybe interlacing behind the back. Good, I'm watching. It gives me a nice reason to watch you all when you're crow. Good job. Release that if you've got the bind, and then switch sides. Reach the left arm up to the side on the inside of the left knee, right arm up. And then you're gonna bend that arm, that left arm behind you, as though you want to touch your hip, your left hip with your the back of your left hand, and grab a hold with your right hand. It's quite difficult if you've got tight shoulders, but it's a really good shoulder opener. Wonderful. Release both hands back. If you're in a crow step or shoot back, <laughs> Make your way back through vinyasa or skip the vinyasa if you like. Meet me in downward facing dog. So breathing with your vinyasa. So always using that as a, a way to sort of just let go of anything, just reconnect to the breath. Breathe in, look to the top of the mat and exhale your journey there. So if you want to hop, take a hop forwards. Inhale, halfway lift and fold as you breathe out. Press the feet down, reach the arms all the way up to the sky. Look up and stretch up, maybe a standing back bend again. And exhale, hands to your heart. Good, we'll do that one more time, one breath per move, well, one or two times, we'll see. Ready? Inhale, reach the arms up, look up and stretch up. Breathe out, fold forwards. Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, both hands down, right foot back, right knee down. The breath in brings you all the way up, and Janasana. Exhale, both hands down, finding a pyramid as you breathe in. Straighten the front and back knee. Exhale, bend into that front knee. Inhale, hug the inner thighs, reach the arms up, crescent lunge. Exhaling, right hand down, left arm open, easy open twist. Good, and then exhale, left hand inside, left foot. Reach the right arm up. Breathe in here. And exhale, look forward. Start to come forwards into half moon. Lift that right leg up so that the hip and the foot are in one line if you can. And perhaps reach the right arm up. If you want to challenge your balance, keep looking down. Maybe bring that left hand towards your heart space. Oh, it's quite tricky. So three, two, and one. Softly bend the left knee. Step back, warrior two. Lovely, flowing a few times. I said lovely. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, come into that side angle. So just using side four. Good, inhale, come back up. Reverse warrior. Move with breath and tension. Exhale, let go of the need to look perfect. Just feel the movement, enjoy it. Inhale, come back. And exhale, last time, inside angle, Pajwa Reach the arm long ahead. Good, 
inhale come back reverse and then find your arms back to warrior two straighten the front knee turn the left toes to the left open your arms up nice and wide get expansive in the collarbones and breathe out hug the low belly in. keep looking forwards leading with your chin hands reach forwards hips reach back head sinks between the armpits just pause for about two or three breaths breathing in and breathing out good one more here inhale and exhale walk your hands slowly towards the back foot left hand on right ankle or wherever right arm reaches up breathe in find space maybe lift a little bit more away from that thigh and then breathe out come forwards through the center all the way to the left leg right hand grabs left leg left arm reaches up that's a nice twist lift away a little bit from that thigh and fold forwards inhale halfway lift and let's find skandhasana bend into the right knee left toes are flexed reach that left arm up right hand on the inside and then come back through center i think we forgot this on the other side <laughs> reach that left arm down right arm up and then start to pivot towards the front foot finding yourself in the high lizard lunge we'll just have to do double <laughs> inhale step forwards to malasana and pause as you exhale both hands down, breathe in, set the left foot back, find that high as it lunge, right foot forwards. Exhale here. Breathe in, step back to that Malasana Yogi squat. And again, you know where we are. Come forwards to crow. I know some people are working on it, so don't forget you can always hug the knees to the outside of the triceps. Look forwards, you've got those chatter around your arms, you can lift your feet up. If you're progressing, you can bring your knees behind your triceps, leaning forwards, looking forwards, lifting heels up. Breathe in, look forwards, and exhale, either shoot back or step back, go through a vinyasa. So working with whatever you're working with, and down dog. Oh, everything's just fun. <laughs> Don't worry, wherever you are, let go of that. Just enjoy it. Breathe in, look forwards. Exhale, journey your way to the top. Breathe in, halfway lift. And fold as you exhale. Press feet down, the arms reach up, roots rise. Look up to the palms. And exhale, hands to your heart. I'll try not to forget the Skandhasana this time. Inhale, the last side, reach the arms up. Breathe out, fold forwards into Uttanasana. Inhaling, halfway lift. And exhale, both hands down, left foot back, left knee down. Inhale, the arms come up, and Janasana. Exhale, both hands either side of the front foot. Find that pyramid, Pajvottanasana. Bend into the front knee, and then the breath brings you all the way up to crescent lunge. Exhale, left hand down, right arm up for an easy lunge twist. Breathe in here, find space, and then exhale, right hand inside, right foot, pivot on left foot, find that side angle with the right arm reaching, the left arm reaching up. Look forwards, reach the right fingertips forwards, maybe left hand on hip, come into half moon pose. Just pausing here to gather your breath, gather your balance. If you try it, maybe try it again, bring the right hand towards your heart space, Keep the left hip on top of the right, just gaze at something that's not moving, keep steady with your breath. And then softly bend into the right knee, step back, Avira Bajrasana 2. Whew, last time with that flow, so inhale, reverse your warrior, no hands, and exhale, find that side angle, no hands. Good, two more times, breathe in, coming back, really lifting, and breathe out to come forwards. Lengthening, find the strength in your front leg. One more, breathe in, come back. And exhale, find side angle. Breathing in, coming back. You're all looking super strong this morning. Find reverse warrior. And then straighten the arms and straighten the front knee. 
Turn all the toes to face the side of the mat. Make sure your feet are parallel. Open your arms wide, spacious in the front body. Exhale, come forward. Hinge from your hips and lead with your chin. Reach your hands forwards a little bit more. Hips back, head between the tops of the shoulders. Stretch through the shoulders, inhale. Up your mouth if you like. Exhale, let go. One more, inhale. And exhale. Really then walk your hands back and towards the back foot, the left foot. Hold on to the left ankle, right hand, reach the left arm up. Exhaling, come back through center. Hold on to the right ankle with the left hand, reach the right arm up. Then come back to center. Breathe in, halfway lift. Hands can come to your heart. Bend into that back knee, the left knee, find Skandasana. Open into that, uh, open pose, leave right arm up, left arm inside the left knee. Hands or no hands come through center to the other side, bending into that right knee, right hand down, left arm up. Inhale here. Good. And then turn and pivot towards the front of the mat. I won't make you do that twice. <laughs> Heel, turn the right foot to the right. Find yourself in that lizard lunge. Drawing the heart through, not round in the upper back. Always use an opportunity to draw the heart through. Step the left foot forwards. Malasana, yogi squat. And both hands down. Exhale, step the right foot back with the left forwards. Finding that lizard lunge again. And then inhale, step the right foot forwards, finding that yogi squat again. And then either stay here and play with the binds or half binds, or come into your final crow. Coming forward, so you've got those chaturanga arms. Maybe your knees are towards the triceps. Looking forward, not looking back or down, hips up. And just maybe lift one foot, lift the other if you're working with it. Maybe having a pillow there always helps. Good. If you're here holding it for three, two, and one. Shoot back, if you like, or step back. <laughs> and then come up to your upward facing dog or cobra. Well done, everyone. And downward facing dog. If you feel a little bit of heat, just find a moment in down dog. Take a moment to feel that central point of your hips lifting up and the groundedness and the balance between the hands pressing into the mat and the feet. Let your breath be steady and smooth. Remember that intention, just, just think about letting go. Hmm. Next breath in, look to the top of the mat, bend your knees and then journey your way there. When you arrive, inhale, halfway lift. And breathe out to fold. Come all the way up to standing, the arms reach all the way out, up and above, look up, palms touch, take that standing back bend. So really lengthening the tailbone down so you've got a light engagement in your glutes. Hug the low ribs in as much as you feel you can as that bends. And then come back to centre, hands to your heart. All right, we're gonna take a standing balance, a dancer pose, because that's a, a back bend, a heart opening balance. And we kind of, warmed up into our hamstrings, but I want to stretch through the hip flexors a bit as well. All right, so we'll do this twice on each side. I'm going to hold, probably for a count of 10 on each one, if we can build that muscle memory. So ground into the right foot, I might not be mirroring you. Pick up the toes and then press them all down, especially the big toe mound. Maybe get a light lifting in the arch, this really helps with balance. Engage through the quads and lengthen the tailbone down, having a sort of engagement in your core here, knitting the ribs in. And then bend that left knee and reach around and grab a hold, ideally of the inside of that foot. If it's not possible, if your shoulders are too tight, hold on to the outside, the pinky toe edge, but if you can, the inside, and then reach the right arm up. This might be where you are, and you might want to hold on to something as well, that's fine. Otherwise, start to exhale and kick the foot against your hand. Try and keep that left hip in line with your right, rather than letting it open out to the side. Good, and do your best, just kick back more. And the more you kick back, really sort of powerfully against that hand, the easier it is to balance. All right, if you're wobbling, don't worry, just come back and join us for 10, 
nine, eight, seven, kick back more, six, five, four, kick back, three, two, kick back one more time, one, oh, come back to center, oh, shake it off, all right, and if you're holding your breath, notice if you were, <laughs> try and breathe the next time, I always hold my breath in that, unless I'm counting and teaching, round through your left foot, all four corners of that foot, and then pick up the toes, and especially the big toe mound. Have that lift of the arch, helping with your balance. Engaging your quads, core, hugging in. And drishti, your focus points. So just looking at something that's not moving, if you know where you're going, rather than looking at the screen. Reach around, grab a hold of that right foot from the inside. Try and make sure that your knees start off level, so that you're not gonna lift that right hip out to the side. Reach the left arm up, and then start to kick back with the right foot. So the more you kick back, remember the easier it is to focus. And I keep my drishti on something that's not moving just ahead of me. Kick back more for 10, nine, eight, seven, kick back, five, six, five, four, three, kick back more, two, don't worry if you wobble, one, and come back. Ooh, shake it off, you all okay? You do that one more time. Yay. All right, weight into the right foot. Pick up those toes, all the usual cues. Make sure you're drawing up through that arch, getting that balance in the standing leg, bending the left knee. Ooh. Good. Reach the right arm up, try and keep the hips and the knees square if you can. And then exhale, kick back. Doesn't matter how far you kick back or how far you lean forwards. Trying to find a sense of a back bend. Ready for 10, nine, eight, seven. Keep breathing, six, five, four, three. Kick back more, a little bit higher, two, and one. Well done, don't worry if you come out a bit. It's only you, it doesn't matter. Shake it off, let go. <laughs> All right, last side. This one really makes me breathe heavily, actually. It's sort of a big heart opener for me. Okay, ground through your left foot, especially the left big toe, lift up that arch, get grounded in that standing leg, and then bend the right knee. Try and have the hips and the knee sort of squarely towards each other, basically, sort of equally square. Left arm reaches up, holding onto the back foot. Ready, kick back. Wonderful, I'm watching you all. I'll try not to fall as I'm watching. Kick back as far as you can now. For 10, nine, eight, seven, six, keep breathing, five, four, three, come back Rachel, two, you're doing brilliantly, kick back one more time, one, Woo. come back and let go, how are you all, <laughs> you're breathing like me, I am, all right, should we make our way down to the mat, all right, so let's do it in this lovely flow way, Pojitadasana, just center yourselves, ground yourself through your feet, reach your hands by your side, just find this mountain pose. Really steady in your posture. Long, all the way through the torso, from the crown of the head, from the toes all the way up to the crown of the head. Take a moment just to reconnect with that breath, taking that Ujjayi breath again if you lost it. make our way down onto the mat. Inhale, reaching the arms up. And exhale, fold forwards. You can bend the knees if they need it. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, both hands down. Step back to a downward facing dog. If you want to go through another vinyasa, just to finish it all off, your last vinyasa, go ahead. Otherwise, stay in down dog. Take a moment to relax the neck. And wait for each other in downward facing dog. Acknowledge some days it's good just to listen to your body. I don't need another vinyasa. Oh yeah, I really want another vinyasa. And then when you're in down dog, bring your knees down. Knees as wide as your mat, toes together and just reach your hips back towards your heels in a child's pose and actively stretch your fingertips forward. Bring the forehead towards the mat just let go of sort of any tension, coming on to nice small poses now. 
So I've kind of um, given us a couple of yin type poses that I use when I teach yin. That I, I really like and the students seem to like them. So I thought we'd do just one to finish off and then an inversion. Well, actually, we'll do an inversion first. So from here, we're going to come forwards. Come to sitting up on your knees. So I'm going to take an inversion, a little bit of an upside down pose. If you want to, you can come into a headstand if you're working with that. Maybe go to a wall and just do your practice against the wall. We're going to take about 10 breaths, 10 to 15 breaths. Otherwise, I'm going to take you to a shoulder stand, which is similar to what we did with Sandra, but without the prop, because we're using our blanket over our blocks. So just lean onto one side and bring your feet forwards. If you're working with headstand and that's more preferable to you, go with it, okay? Otherwise, come onto your back. Always be careful of your neck, never move your head from side to side in a shoulder stand. I probably wouldn't teach it to many other classes, I'm simply teaching it to you because I've seen from last week especially that you're all, you know, and I know what you're capable of, but it's not one that you really want to take lightly. You, can, you need to go careful with this. So start by lifting your feet up and then maybe lift your hips up, walk your hands so that they're on your low back and hug your elbows towards each other. Try and get your elbows as close towards each other as you can and as high up your back. So you shouldn't be feeling any compression in the back of your neck. Probably the arch of your neck at the back, the C-spine is probably off the mat. You won't, don't want any pressure there whatsoever so you should be easily able to talk. Reach your toes up long so your legs are active. Your core is engaged, holding you up here. If it's not for you, shoulder stand, then just have legs up the wall like we did last week, without the block or with the block, legs up. So if you're in a shoulder stand or a headstand, wherever you are, take about eight more deep breaths. focusing on being here. So when we're in inversions, it takes a bit of focus, doesn't it? So it's a really good way to just bring us back to being in the present moment. Well done. If you're in headstand and you've come out, come to a child's pose. If you're in shoulder stand and you wanted to take a halasana and bring your feet behind you, you can do that. And just take a couple of breaths in, not too long. And then come back all the way onto the mat, slowly lowering down. Feet come last, use your core to bring you, your legs slowly to the floor. If you were in headstand and you're in a child's pose, just stay there for a moment. And if you took the shoulder stand or the legs up the wall, bend your feet, bend your knees, roll yourself onto the side and press yourself up. And if you were in child's pose, just come to sitting upright. So we're going to take, uh, I think I've done this with you before, it's called walrus pose. So this um, bolster that we've made, Vicky, what we did earlier, we had, um, and Sandra who's watching, who will be watching this later at home, we had a makeshift bolster, Sandra won't need it, she's got her own, with your two blocks like this, and a nice sturdy thick blanket that's going to be comfortable, wrapped around it like a bolster, or if you've got a bolster that's sturdy enough, that's good too. Um, this is for comfort really, because it just blocks is too hard. And then you're going to come to sitting. This is going to stretch nicely into the side body. Sit on with your hips. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to do both sides. So I'm sitting with my right hip facing just to the side of the bolster and my knees sort of one on top of each other. Just watch for a moment while I go into it and then come into it just to, in case you can't see me quite right. And then you're going to lean over towards your right arm so that your centre of your body, the centre of your waist is on the bolster and your hips are on the floor. Reach your left arm up and over and then the top leg, the left leg of mine is going to go backwards and the bottom leg is going to come forwards. If it's too sharp on your ribs or anywhere just ease a little bit, find a comfortable position where you can stay and we're going to take about 10 breaths, 10 to 12 breaths on each side. So you're stretching the top leg back, the knee can be bent or straight, and the bottom leg's coming forwards. 
and then stretching that top arm so that it's the palms on the back of the bottom arm. Resting your head on that bottom bicep and breathing in and out. So really just try and breathe into the side that is uppermost, imagining those uh, muscles in between the ribs as they expand. Getting a little bit of a stretch here to allow more breath into your body, more prana, more energy. Maybe staying with that Ujjayi breath gently. You can close down the eyes if you like. Just enjoy this sensation. If it's too much on your low back and you do get any discomfort, just simply bring that top leg back inwards to the center a little bit, adjust your knees. So in the end, we'll hold this for about five minutes on each side, but we're not going to hold it for that long. Maybe around about a minute or so. So taking about another five breaths. Inhale for one. And exhale. Slowing down the breath. Smooth and steady. Inhale two. And exhale. Inhale three. And exhale. Breathe in four. And let go, exhale. And five. And exhale. of this, go easy, bring the top hand down first, the left, whichever hand it is, and then bring that bottom, the front knee back and the back knee forward so that the knees are in line and then press yourself up and just turn yourself through the centre and all the way to the other side. So you're going to have the other hip on the bolster or on the side of the bolster. And lower yourself down. Now you know where you're going. <laughs> so starting by bringing the arms overhead and then the top knee comes back. Adjust yourself if it's not too comfy. It really is much nicer on a, a proper bolster if you've got one. As long as it's high enough to get that sort of sense of little openness. And then really spread those muscles in between the ribs as you breathe in. Really Think about where that breath is going, seeing if you can expand into it. And take about 12 slow deep breaths. Maybe practicing that Ujjayi breath. Perhaps closing the eyes. About four more breaths here. Inhale for one. And exhale. Inhale two. And exhale. And inhale three. And exhale. And inhale four. And exhale. And then the same thing again, reversing out. Hands come down first, then the knees stack on top of each other. And press yourself all the way up. And then all you're going to do is bring your swing your legs round so that your uh, knees are on top of that bolster. And then you're going to lie down into Shavasana. If you want to take a happy baby or any final little movement, go ahead. Some of you might want to sort of take a little twist. Just find your way, it's your practice. If you're ready to jump, Chivasana. 
you're ready for Shavasana. Lift your hips up, adjust yourself a bit, settle down. I really like Shavasana with my knees supported. Cover yourself with a blanket or an eye pillow, whatever you need to just really allow yourself this rest, this time to stop before your day gets really going. Giving yourself this time to just feel a bit nourished, you're really doing something good for yourself by just pausing. Let your breath just be natural. Let the breath come and go. take a few rounds of breath together here and this one's a little bit more of a calming breath I'm only going to do it for about three or four rounds probably most of you know it already it's called four seven eight so you're breathing in for four holding for seven and then exhaling for eight and it really slows that nervous system down to bring you into this sort of rest and digest just for a few moments so start by taking a big breath in together Opening your mouth and sighing it all out. And then inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And in for four, three, two, one. Hold, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In four, three, two, one. Hold, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, and out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And just let go of that now, just notice the calmness. Or you can continue if you feel it's all enough for you. just got something to share with you actually that I read on Instagram by this, these people that I follow called The Happy Pair and what, sometimes they write some really wonderful things I just thought it was so true for me maybe it'd be nice to share it it's, they, they wrote that your character is much more important than your reputation your reputation is who other, others think you are and your character is who you really are you can't control what others think of you. You'll be incredible in one person's eyes and awful in another's. But this has nothing to do with who you really are. Reputation can come and go, but character is what underpins it all. It's the true you that's left beneath all the many layers. All your continued efforts help forge the tools within you, which build a life of purpose and value and a character to be proud of. Thought that was that rung true a lot for me a lot this week. I'm going to leave you in Shavasana, so I know that some of you like to stay a bit longer, and some of you don't. So I'll leave you to make your own choice, and I'll see you soon. Loads of love, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye, Sandra.